Hello, welcome to another Metro Chords Game of Pickups. This video is for the beginning of March 2020, or 2020 if that's what you want to call it. And we've got lots to show you today, so let's jump straight in with this weird looking cartridge here. Alright, what system do you think this is for? NES? Famicom? Well, it kind of looks like a Famicom cartridge, but no, this is actually a Taiwanese Mega Drive cartridge. This is a pretty rare version of the Earth Defend, and uh, not a very good game from Realtek. Now, it also got released in the United States, and while that version isn't uh, common, uh, this Taiwanese version is extremely uncommon, it's very rare. And I'm happy to own a mint copy of this, but um, what type of game is it? Well, it's a vertical scrolling shooter, and we'll be doing a full on review of that coming soon. Okay. Talking of reviews, um, Red Art Games in France got in touch with me again and they sent me over four PlayStation 4 titles. Very nice of them. Now, if you don't know, Red Art Games is a company that takes digital only games and puts them onto physical media. And anyone that makes physical media is all right in my book because I love physical media. I hate digital only. Anyway, they sent over a uh, full blast. We've also got War Tech Fighters. We got a Bard's Tale and this one that looks a little bit risque on the front cover, Rip Riddled Corpses EX. All right, so I'll be doing reviews of all those games in an upcoming uh, episode, so please keep an eye open for that. This one looks pretty good. It looks like a twin shooter, a twin stick shooter on the back, but um, who knows? We'll find out when I play it. Let's put those down there for now. All right, now. We've also got a bit of a Sega Ages love in today's show with the Puyo Puyo 2 collection. Now, I do own quite a lot of the uh, Sega Ages 2 collection for the PlayStation 2, but I never had, had this one, and a lot of people said they should pick it up. Um, I mean, I already own Puyo Puyo 2 on the Sega Saturn, which is a very, very, very good version. Maybe the definitive version. But a lot of people said I should get this and, um, you know, add it to the collection, so... Here it is. Now being a Japanese uh, second-hand game, it's in perfect condition as you'd expect. Let's take a look at the disc. Yeah, I hope you can see that. Yep, just looking here on the monitor. Yeah, you can see that. Nice and shiny, isn't it? Not a mark on it. And of course, it comes with all the little extras. And in this case, it includes the little file card. Just the which I guess you were meant to put into some sort of file of facts or something. All the Sega Ages games came with these. Not too sure what you're meant to do with them really, but nice little touch after all. Okay, now uh, we got some PlayStation 4 stuff, but uh, some more PlayStation 4 stuff, but uh, we'll take a look at that later on. First of all, let's take a look at the Xbox 360 stuff. Now, um, I had a bit of a binge on Yahoo Auctions uh, a week or so ago, and every single one of these titles costs less than 500 yen and they're all mint. <laughs> Xbox 360 stuff in Japan now is going for really cheap prices. Well, most of it is, anyway. So here's what I picked up. Uh, so we got Dragon Ball, Raging Blast. Pretty decent one-on-one -on -one, uh, beat em up here featuring the Dragon Ball characters. And as you'd expect, lovely condition. Okay, then we've got Duke Nukem Forever, Japanese version. Now I did I used to own this and I sold it for like, I think I got like 5,800 yen for it years ago. Picked it up again, 500 yen, so it's good to have that back in the collection. And the Japanese one is rated Z, so you have to be over 18 to play it. And it comes with this uh, DLC pack here, where you can get big heads. What's that? Ego Blast, uh, I guess that's a weapon. And then uh, some new clothes for Duke as well. Pretty good stuff. And of course, the manual is also included. All right. So I'm looking forward to getting back into Duke Nukem Forever because um, I haven't played it since it came out. And I do remember quite liking it. Um, one cool thing about this cover is, uh, is that it's reversible. On the back, you have this. Isn't that pretty cool? The Hall of the King. Good stuff. All right, and let's see, what else do we have? We have Lollipop Chaser, another game which I used to own and I sold on uh, basically after I finished it, and here it is again for less than 500 yen. 
I do like the uh, disc cover on this Japanese one, it's pretty cool isn't it? And of course we've got the DLC code included and the manual. Alright, now this is by Grasshopper Games and uh, Grasshopper Games uh, can be hit and miss to be honest. I mean there were a couple of good games but uh, they seem to be lacking a little something. But uh, oh, thankfully uh, Lollipop Chainsaw kind of uh, ra rose their level back up again. A little bit on the um, erotic side maybe. But uh, still a decent game, let's put it down there. Alright, and still with the uh, Xbox 360, we've got Soul Calibur 5. No, 6. Soul Calibur 6. Or is it 4? Yeah, Soul Calibur 6. And um, this one, with being the Xbox 360 version, features Yoda. Look at that. And yes, as to be expected, a lovely condition. In fact, the manual for this game is massive. Just check that out, look how many pages are in this, look at this. That is a big manual, it actually has uh, 53 pages, which is quite quite big for the 101 fighting game manual. And uh, yeah, it's quite complex as well. Now I'm a big Soul Calibur fan, actually um, since the very first PlayStation game to be honest. Um, the Dreamcast game was amazing. That was really, really good. And then uh, number three, I didn't really get into that much, and um, I kind of uh, passed on it for a while. And then this one came out, and uh, yeah, it's a good one. And finally, on the Xbox 360, we've got this one. This is Zega Pain, or Zega Pain, or something. Japanese actually says Zega Pain, not. No idea what this is, never ever played it, but I thought the cover looked really cool. According to the back of the box, it's some sort of online mech beat em up. Uh, I've yet to try it out, but uh, I really think I should do. It is an online, is, is an online game, so um, I don't know if it's still going to be uh, playable online these days, but uh, definitely seems like an interesting one. Yeah, let's take a quick look at the instruction manual. See if I can find some interesting images for you to see. Here we go, take a look at this. Alright. Come on, focus on that please. Yeah, there you go. So you can get an idea of what type of game it is. Alright. Okay, so that is it for the Xbox 360 stuff. But we've also got uh, something for the Xbox One X. And that is Bayonetta and Vanquish pack. Oh yes, the uh, new really uh, released uh, double pack comes in a steel tin, as you can see here. Beautiful looking Bayonetta on that side, and on the other side, we've got Vanquish. Lovely stuff. And on the inside, of course, we have uh, more images and so on. Can you see that? Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Now, um, the disc is actually in the Xbox. Now, out of uh, the uh, new versions for consoles that uh, are being on the uh, Xbox One X and the PlayStation 4 Pro, uh, the Xbox One X version is the one to get. Um, both that and the PlayStation 4 one run at the same resolution, but the Xbox uh, One X versions are locked at 60 frames per second at all times which the uh, PlayStation 4 Pro version doesn't. Also, uh, the Xbox One X version has a slightly better graphics um, due to the way the shadows are mapped on the uh, Vanquish and Bayonetta. But uh, basically, if you've got a PlayStation 4 Pro or a Xbox One X, either format will do you well. Uh, what's interesting is uh, playing this on the stock Xbox One and the stock PlayStation 4 actually uh, turns out that the game's better on the stock Xbox One. <laughs> Just kind of weird. Usually they turn out a lot better on the stock uh, Xbox 4, but um, Xbox 4 or PlayStation 4. But not in this case. Very unusual. Something to do with the frame rates. Alright, and keeping with PlayStation 4, I picked up this Hori Pad. Look at that. Isn't that a thing of beauty? Now, as you can see, it's not the standard PlayStation style controls. Now, I find the PlayStation uh, controllers, the analog on the PlayStation controllers, horrible to use, they really make my thumb hurt. I don't know, it just seems unnatural to hold. Look, here's one down here. So for me, it just seems very unnatural to have both my thumbs, you know, in 
this direction and I always can kind of keep slipping off you know the thumbsticks I really don't like the way the position it just feels horrible and yeah it really has my thumb and the d-pad shit on these anyway which I've mentioned before so I only got this hoary one which is uh, more like an Xbox uh, style controller with the way it's got its analog spaced out plus they are uh, the concave so my thumb's not going to slip off them as much and it's got a proper d-pad on it so that's good and one little cool thing which is really good about this is the ability to slow down the analog triggers as you can see here what this allows you to do is uh you know certain games uh, you gotta shoot something up in the distance and you may find that the analog uh, movement is a little bit too fast on the crosshair well by hitting uh, one of the buttons on the back of the controller you can slow down the uh, actual analog input so it becomes more accurate and then you take your thing off the button and it goes back to normal so that's a really nice feature to have i think on a, a controller like this and as i said it looks really smart so i'm gonna look forward to uh, trying this one out later on today okay and still sticking with playstation 4 there's a lot of playstation 4 today uh, i listened to uh, the advice that you guys gave me in the comments in the last video um, when I showed all the PlayStation 4 games and you, you mentioned that um, I should pick up uh, two titles in particular and they were Horizon Zero Dawn so here it is I got the complete edition of that as you can see it's still uh, sealed uh, I haven't had a chance to play it yet but I am looking forward to getting into it um, apparently this is meant to be a really good game according to uh, what you guys were saying in the comments another one that uh, a lot of people said I should pick up for the PlayStation 4 is this the Last of Us and a remastered version of course being on PlayStation 4 and again this is uh, still sealed I've not played it but um, another one I'm really looking forward to getting into um, I did actually see it I think it was uh, a while back maybe five years ago something like that and um, I did like the look of it to be honest and um, I didn't have a PlayStation 3 at the time and uh, I was hoping it would come out on the Xbox 360 but no chance of that ever happening um, but yeah, here it is, I finally got it, so once I've finished Vanquish, this is going to be my next game to try out. Alright, and one more PlayStation 4 game which came um, after the last video is this one, this is Gravity Rush 2. Now this is actually the American release, uh, luckily it works on Japanese PlayStations, uh, no problem. And uh, yeah, it's um, basically uh, an adventure action game, so to say where you uh, control a girl, um, fly around, shoot things, battle monsters, things like that. It kind of reminds me of an updated version of Blue Submarine number 6 that was on the Dreamcast. It has that style to it, you know, the uh, anime, uh, not cell shaded, but the, you know, that type of look, uh, type of uh, 3D graphics. And what's really interesting about this is that it's all in French, which surprised me. Uh, yeah, all the, te all the uh, languages are in French. Uh, the text is in English, of course, but the uh, spoken language all in French. But um, yeah, pretty decent game. Okay, and there is one more title to be had. Now, recently you may know that uh, a certain uh, Super Nintendo game or Super Famicom game got found, and that was a Coolie Skunk. And um, that game did actually get released on the PlayStation, and here it is. Yeah. Now, Coolie Skunk on the PlayStation is really, really, really bloody expensive these days. And this is my copy, and as you can see, it's a little bit uh, faded, um, the case on, on it, or the cover, but uh, the game itself is uh, in perfect condition. Let me just uh, get it out here for you. Oops. But uh, yeah, as you can see, it's uh, let's check there on the screen. Yeah, you can see it's a fairly decent condition. A few little marks on it, but not too bad. But um, yeah, since uh, this game is uh, quite obscure, it was pretty expensive. And now that the uh, Super Famicom game has been found, um, the popularity of this PlayStation 1 has really skyrocketed. So <laughs> now it's really expensive. But uh, thankfully, I could uh, pick this up for a reasonable price. Uh, it was just over 5,000 yen but that's because the covers faded to death on it uh, an immaculate condition one can go for like 20,000 yen these days so yeah if you can find a coolie skunk 
pick it up. And it did actually get a re-release in Japan as well, but uh, that's not as desirable and it is a lot cheaper. That's the original release. And uh, it did get a US release under the name of Punky Skunk with a really horrible cover. Mm. But anyway, we don't care about that. All right, so they are the gaming pickups uh, for the uh, later, half, later half of February. Hope you've enjoyed taking a look at those. And now it's time to take a look and see what you guys have been buying. Not many submissions this week, so we'll leave the pictures up a little bit longer than usual. Till next time, guys, take it easy and keep on gaming. See ya.